So it is Tuesday um, at the American Heart meeting. It's a virtual meeting this year, the annual meeting with me uh, to talk about what happened on Tuesday are Kim Eagle from Michigan and Deepak Bhatt from Boston. We've talked about all of the trials that were at the American Heart, and now we're talking about really bizarre flu vaccine, who'd have thunk? Uh, but nonetheless, here we are. The uh, invested trial actually looked at flu vaccine in cardiovascular disease. Deepak, uh, tell us about this trial. It's a little bit off base, but in fact, it isn't. An interesting issue. We're talking about uh, vaccines in general. Everyone's looking forward to the COVID vaccine, but flu vaccine is still a great, great thing to have inside your body. Tell us about the trial. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I should first disclose that I'm invested in invested. Uh, that is, I'm on the steering committee of this NIH funded trial. And it was designed to really see what is the effect of two different formulations of the flu vaccine, a standard dose versus a high dose on cardiopulmonary hospitalization. So looking at cardiac endpoints and looking at pulmonary endpoints. And uh, the overall trial in a nutshell was neutral, not showing a significant reduction in cardiopulmonary events uh, for either of those doses. But I do think it's really important for cardiologists to realize that this in no way diminishes the value of influenza vaccination versus no vaccination. Again, this was two different formulations. Neutrality showing both were very well tolerated. The side effect profile of each was really very good, very, very low rate of side effects. And I think that's the important message for cardiologists, for primary care physicians, or whoever might be listening to us to get out to their patients. Uh, that is, you know, it, it's not so critical, perhaps, which formulation is used, but rather the message is, is go get that flu vaccine, however you can get it, as soon as you can get it. Okay, uh, so Kim, your thoughts on this, because I have some thoughts as well. Well, I think, uh, I think it's really important for our learning audience to understand that influenza causes not just fever and tachycardia, it also causes the release of cytokines, which in and of themselves can erode plaque and destabilize plaques. And this is why community-wide studies suggest that if you vaccinate everybody in a community, you reduce the risk of acute MI by as much as 50%. And so in my patients who are recalcitrant to the flu vaccine, I try to help them understand that, that the vaccine is reducing the risk of a de, de novo heart attack. Uh, and we know that a 20 to 30% of our US population is currently opting out of getting the flu vaccine. So we really need to push that hard every day, every patient in clinic, and especially now with COVID. Getting a double hit of COVID and influenza would be a terrible thing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know, and uh, yeah, no, I was just gonna say Kim's point is, I, I don't know that all cardiologists are necessarily familiar with the primary data, but there was a meta-analysis done actually by one of our uh, former Brigham House officers, Jay Goodell, that uh, meta-analyzed the randomized clinical trials of flu vaccine versus no flu vaccine. Small studies, but randomized and lumping it all together and is published in JAMA, what we found in that was a significant reduction in cardiovascular events. So now those are the data underpinning um, the association, well, not just association, causality there uh, to less cardiovascular events. And in terms of registries, a number of registries have shown that patients that get the flu have higher rates of MI, of stroke. So uh, if we can prevent the flu in general, it's a good thing to do. Obviously, if we're in the middle of a COVID pandemic, it's even more important to try to make sure there's not a flu epidemic raging at the same time. Yeah, uh, let me just add a couple of things. Uh, you know, in the time when everyone is looking at vaccines and saying, well, I don't really need these at all, end of story, period. I think our message has to be, oh, please go out and get the flu vaccine. The other thing is for old people like me, Right, the double dose is still a very critical issue, right? Versus the low dose, because our immune systems just don't react the same way. And to simply say, well, I'm going to just have the low dose, even though I'm, you know, 70 years old, uh, because it makes no difference, is not the message that you want to take away from this trial. And so it's important to remember that. Listen to your doc who's telling you to get the vaccine, and be sure you get the proper dose for your age. Uh, no, it may not make a lot of difference as to high versus low doses in terms of outcomes with cardiovascular disease, but it's the right thing to do, folks, right? Absolutely. Do what your primary care physician says. I mean, sometimes you know, there are people with various allergies, like to 
uh, some of the constituents of the vaccine, but there's a you know egg-free, thimerosal-free version of the flu vaccine. So there's definitely uh, some choices there that need to be made in terms of type of flu vaccine, but that's something you know that the primary care physician can sort out. The key message for patients, as you rightly say, that we've got to deliver them is get that flu vaccination. And you know, maybe yeah. an outpatient, if they're hospitalized with their ACS or because they're getting a stent or something, that's a great time to do it too before discharge. Yeah, any Jim. time is a great time. Uh, and I, I really like the point you made, Deepak, that the safety of flu vaccines has been worked out over decades and decades and decades. The local reaction today is mild for most patients and the safety is very robust. Yep, so there you have it, get your flu back. So go ahead, Deepak, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I, what Kim said is completely right. And now we have a bolus of several thousand more patients with safety data for two different formulations of the flu vaccine showing it's very safe, very well tolerated. A lot of the bizarre stuff you read on the internet in terms of side effects not happening. So hopefully it'll provide more reassurance to patients that it really is a safe thing to do if your doctor tells you to get the flu vaccine. In fact, even if your doctor doesn't tell you to get the flu vaccine, maybe they should be telling you, but they forgot. So <laughs> just go out there and do it. Get a new doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that cardiologists are talking about flu vaccine at a time when everyone's talking about vaccines, period. Maybe one day we'll be doing the same thing with COVID vaccine, which hopefully is soon around the corner. So thank you, Kim. Thank you, Deepak. That's a very interesting uh, Tuesday here at the American Heart Virtual Meeting. Uh, we're talking about a flu vaccine, and that's not a bad thing. Thanks for being here.